Hello, hello, it's John, small town, small time bookseller, and I am here because I finally managed to figure out how to sell a few books. Uh, it took a while, but I did it, and that's what I do when I figure it out like that. I'll come on in here and I'll tell you all about it. I don't do any garage sale videos. I don't do any yard sale videos. I don't do videos at the Goodwill bins with a GoPro looking at my hands like a pot filled with sand, a leather purse, mm, a penny dish, a, a string bag containing tea and flowers and several wrinkled potatoes. No, I love those videos. I watch them all the time, but that's not what I do. I'll just come here, tell you the books that I managed to sell and, uh, you know, Hopefully you, hopefully you dig that kind of thing. So, um, it's been a crazy, a crazy time here. So I literally went from worst. So I get, I do the weekly payments on eBay. So it pays every Tuesday. If you're not on eBay, you have a choice. You can have about when you get paid. I get paid weekly, um, and it comes every Tuesday. So a couple weeks ago, I had the least amount like my lowest pay pay check from ebay of the year it was terrible i was going a couple days with no sales one sale no sales one sale um my and then i did something and then the following week was my largest um pay check from ebay of the year so what did i do let me tell you what i sold and i'll tell you what i did afterwards Yes, it's a ploy to try and get you to stick around a little longer and watch more of the video. I'm sorry, but that's what I'm doing. All right, so here's what's sold. Um, in this video, I'm going to talk about three Nata books, which were, you know, they're fine. It's always good to sell the Nata books, but um, I did sell 30 books. So there's going to be a lot of uh, just me talking about books and maybe not a whole lot of commentary. You're welcome. All right, so we're going to let me grab my... Our notes here. So maybe I'll put them right there. See if that works out. All right. So the first one we're going to talk about, um, and again, as always, I'm going to go from the, the 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 least valuable to the most valuable. Again, a ploy to try to keep you a little bit longer watching the video. I appreciate that. All right. So first off, we're going to start off with this chintzy little thing here, the illustrated art of manliness, which perhaps I could have read because I caved into an order uh, an offer of six dollars and 84 cents i really dislike taking anything less than ten dollars but um this really wasn't selling for much more than that regularly and so this was kind of in line with what it was going for i don't even know why i listed it a lot of books that are you know under ten dollars i box them up and i sell them to half price books but this one i listed this one sold six dollars and 84 cents the next one is kind of cool and I've had it uh, for quite a while. This is a Stephen King book, um, Cimetière. It's in French. I have no idea how to pronounce that. Uh, actually, what I think I just said sounded pretty good. But uh, I'm going to go with that. I'm not going to try to do it again because I thought that one came out pretty well. Uh, but it was $10, a little paperback book. Um, and I've had that one for quite a while. So this is not the first um, French. I sold some Warhammer books in French recently. So... The foreign language stuff does sell. I've sold Spanish um, and French now. And uh, those are the only ones. I've got some other stuff that's in like Serbian and some other little more unusual languages. And those have not sold. But the Spanish and the French materials do. Um, Spanish quite a bit. I'm in Texas. So, you know, especially around here, um, whether it's, uh, it's guidebooks, um, like study guides, I mean and uh, uh, novels, uh, religious items that are in Spanish. So uh, that kind of, don't, don't shy away from the foreign language stuff, especially the the Spanish and the French. All right, next book that sold, The Angels of Alchemy. Uh, this was $10. I had a lot of religious books, and I don't know if this is a religious book or not. It just had the word angels in it, so I was making an assumption because I really don't remember. But uh, there are several uh, religious books uh, on today's list. Um, but that was $10. The next one, uh, Jim Bridger. He was like a famous mountain man type of thing. I had this one for quite a while, too. That sold for $10. Um, uh, study Guide, the TSI Study Guide, another $10 sale. So we had a lot uh, between the $10 to $15 range. 
um, which is fine. You know, again, I'm picking these puppies up for 30 cents, 33 cents, maybe 50 cents, maybe a dollar. Um, not paying a lot. So getting 10 bucks is, is fine. Um, next we have Manifesting with Alignment. I have no idea what this book is about, but it's called Manifesting with Alignment. And it was sold for $10 as well. This is interesting. Um, this is called the COVID Defeat Book or the Defeat of COVID Book or something like that. And if you try to list something with the word COVID in it, uh, it won't let you. So it'll say like, you know, trying to cut down on misinformation and things like that getting out there. So I guess they just don't allow. So I noticed that a lot of other people had this book and it was just called the Defeat Book. So I listed it as the Defeat Book and it sold. But it was about the defeat of COVID um, is what that was referring to. So that's kind of interesting that, that they would, um, uh, you know, flag that as something that would not be allowed to be sold. Um, the next one is another one I've had for a long time. Uh, the Great American Tradition. This is a book about, I think it's about Clydesdales, like the horses. And um, I've dropped the price on this several times. I finally sold $12. It's a beautiful book, wonderful pictures of Clydesdales. Um, moving along. Where are we at? Oh, the <laughs> so this is the a funny thing about, about ye olden Ebays. So I've had the three of these, the LSAT trainer. And I've had them at the bottom of the shelf. You know they've sat for a while because they're at the bottom of the shelf. Because as other stuff sells, they slowly sink to the bottom and I put more stuff on. Three copies of this. All three sold within two days. Like they've been sitting there for months. Months and months. I uh, sold one for $15, which was my asking price. Sold one for twelve fifty, which was not my asking price. <laughs> and then I sold one for 10 but they're actually the one that for $10... Um, I canceled and relisted because I never paid, but it was interesting that I got all three of them. So I'm not counting that one in my grand total and all that, but, uh, and it was going to South Korea and I thought this guy's going to be paying a ton in shipping. I'll take the $10. So $15 and twelve fifty. but it's interesting, like really like one sold and then another one the next day and another one the next day. It was crazy. So there's gotta be something in the, in the algorithm there about if it's, somebody you know it seems like hey this guy is selling this book so if someone else looks for it we'll promote it um because i think it seems like i'll get a, a a spate of religious sales you know all you know kind of congregated together and uh and was one after another or, or all of a sudden i'll get a whole bunch of orders from california or pennsylvania and i just think there's got to be something in there that that if something sells it kind of bumps up and then somebody else buys something that's either in the same region. I don't know about the region thing. Maybe that's just, I don't know. It seems like I'll get that though. Like I'll get several from Texas or several from one particular area. Um, I don't know, just obviously just my anecdotal completely, but anyhow, um, where did we go? So we were there. All right. So that one, last one was 12, 50 and one for $15. All right. Um, Spurgeon sermons. I have sold uh, several different books by of uh, Spurgeon's sermons. This is volumes one and two. Sold for twelve dollars. Pick up his sermons. They sell uh, for sure. That's another religious book that sold this time. Um, a beautiful copy of Grimm's Fairy Tales from Barnes and Noble. One of those leather bound ones. Twelve dollars and fifty cents for that one. Some of those can be quite valuable. Uh, always look them up. Some of them are. They're, they sell. They really do. Some are 10 to $15, but some are a lot more. Next one, Tactical Strongman. Um, and this is sold for $13. Um, the next one, this is a book in Spanish, Himnos de Sion, uh, $14 for a book of hymns in Spanish. Uh, this was, the next one was from the, um, the, the big, lot of military aircraft book that I got several weeks back. So they, you know, I'm still selling one or two of those every time, it seems like. This was on the Messerschmitt, the top drawings of the Messerschmitt for $15 on that one. Um, next, moving along. All right, 15 bucks for, this is the Case Studies on Diversity and Social Justice, $15. Um, if anyone's new to book selling, you will notice a theme of nonfiction. Um, the vast majority of what I sell 
are are nonfiction books, whether it's religious, whether it's um, study guides, historical things. That's what you're going to notice: law, business, um, and very rarely there'll be something where there's like the Grimm's fairy tales, you know, something of fiction, but not a lot at all. Um, so as you're sourcing, that's what you want to focus on is nonfiction. And then for, for fiction, it's got to be something special, a leather bound Barnes and Noble. The, the Stephen King, Stephen King apparently sells all the time. I don't usually pick them up, but this one with being in French, I thought was unique. Um, and then the, vintage stuff um but not always you know you can get a book that's 150 years old and it'll be four or five bucks and it's always disappointing when that happens um let's see where am i now so 14 did that one okay um man and his symbols carl jung um a nice copy a vintage copy of this this is 15 dollars and then we had um, Reap What You Sow. I think this is actually a fiction novel, I believe. It sold for $17. Um, then we had, oh, this was the uh, the Holy Bible, a study edition. So Bibles do sell, they can sell, especially study editions. And um, it seems like it's also, if it has not been inscribed, uh, if it's a newer condition, you know, definitely look those up. This was Red Letter, which is a great keyword to look for with Bibles. This one is also large print, which can also be a good keyword to look for uh, when you're looking at Bibles. Um, so and this one sold for uh, $19.50. The next one, Hypno Babies. <laughs> yeah, Hypno Babies. Uh, it's just, I didn't realize how fun it is to say that. I've read it several times, but it's the first time I've actually said the word Hypno Babies. Try it. Hypno Babies. Yeah. Uh, $19.99. For hypno babies, all right. The next one, the key map of Houston. You see that one? You see how brightly colored that orange book is? It's big orange key map of Houston. I passed over that. I looked for like twenty minutes for this book, and when I found it, it wasn't off in a corner. It was right in the middle of like shelf five, you know, row C. Bright orange key map of Houston. I was furious. I actually had to go in and tell my daughter about that when that when that happened. Um, next, another Bible. This one is a Russian Bible. This I picked up two of these um, a while back. The first one sold right away, and this has been sitting for a few months. But it finally sold for twenty dollars. It's a Russian Bible, and then yet another religious book, the Zohar, Volume One, sold for twenty five dollars. I have sold several copies of the Zohar. I don't know what it is, but I've sold it several times. Um, the Zohar, $25. I believe it's something, I think this, hmm, I won't even say. I, I know some I've sold have been in Hebrew, so it's something with Judaism, but I really don't know what it is. I'm assuming it is. I could be totally wrong on that. If anyone wants to tell me what the Zohar is, you're welcome to leave it in the comments. Another ploy. Um, 22, 20. The Clinical Interviewing, $25. I got this one actually at a new place to source books. It's, a, it's another return store, kind of like the Bin Drop in Lake Jackson. But this one is called Black Fridays. I don't know if that's a national thing or if you guys know about that one. But there's a few around Houston, similar to where they start on Friday. They're closed Thursday. And then Friday, things are like $7. And then it goes 5 4 3 one and their their day before they close to restock is like 50 cents so things can get pretty darn cheap um but i picked up some some books there and this was one of them so i probably paid two or maybe three dollars for that one and uh, it sold for 20 no 25 sold for 25 all right so we are moving up the 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 prices here so that was 25 dollars the next one, controlling the human mind. Um, thirty dollars for controlling the human mind. Seems cheap to be able to thirty bucks, and you can learn how to control the human mind. I wonder if it's controlling your own or other people's. That might be the difference. Um, all right, we're getting close to the top sales of the video. Next one, we have the complete textbook of holistic self diagnosis. Thirty three dollars. If you do see this book. In good condition, this can be like a $50 to $60 sale. Mine, the front cover was detached, 
and a lot of pages were were kind of scuffed up. There's no writing in it, but there was some, uh, like someone had stepped on it or something. There's some marks on it and, and, you know, some damage to some of the pages. And it still sold for $33. All right. This was kind of a cool one. The Cradle of the Game. This is baseball and baseball parks in North Carolina. And was it North Carolina or South? Yeah, North Carolina. And when I got that, I had it listed for 40 I think, and somebody offered me 35 and sent a message saying that this is going to go in a textile museum that they have in North Carolina. And it's funny because the message said, could you please accept my humble offer? I'm like, took five bucks off. That's a pretty darn good offer, actually. So I accepted their humble offer of $35. And I even looked it up about this um, textile museum in North Carolina. And they have a lot of stuff about North Carolina and, and the local history of the place. So Oh, that's kind of cool. That's going to be put in a museum, or so they say. I'll have to go there and actually find out sometime. Um, another religious book coming up here, and one of the big sellers, Interlinear Bible. So this is a Bible that has interlinear, so it has the Hebrew, the Greek, and the English all together. So if you're studying, you know, the different languages, um, it has it there together. That sold for $40, Interlinear Bible. This is a big one, big hardcover, really nice one. All right, so that leaves us here with the big sale of the week. Prosser, Wade, and Schwartz Torts Cases and Materials, which sold for $60. Yay, $60 for the big sale of the week. <laughs> What's that? Oh, oh, I'm, this just in. I'm being told that that was not actually the big sale of the week. We do have one that was even better than $60. And that one is, where'd it go? Oh, Civil Procedure. Oh, look at this, another law book. So you have one law, gets bested by another law. Doesn't that often happen? Civil Procedure, Cases, Materials, and Questions, $70. So uh, very happy to sell that one. That had actually been sitting for not to end. Oh, hold on. I'm My assistant is giving me something, and I'm being told that. This just in. We have one more book. Um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, we do have one more. That's the actual big seller of the week. And I got this, as most of you know, <laughs> or can guess, for 33 cents. Guides to the Evaluation of Permanent Impairment. Any guesses? Anybody out there? guesses on how much guides to the evaluation of permanent impairment went for no no yes here it is a hundred and eighty five dollars that was awesome yes very very happy about that sale obviously so hundred and eighty five dollars man you just never know so what do we what did we learn today let's recap um uh, religion sells, law books sell, the $60, the $70 one, medical, right? Guides to the evaluation of permanent impairment. Medical books often sell. And a lot of that other stuff, my study guides and um, uh, stuff like that, you know, those are less, they sell also, but they're in the 10 to 15 to $20 range. The big sellers are very often this, law books and medical books. So, you enjoyed that. Oh, I did have three Nauta books to sell. I sold another one of my Q-Link um, SIM cards that I've got about 50 of those left. Um, get a couple bucks every time I sell one of those. Because that's the one thing I do, free shipping. Just because they're all listed free shipping. So I have to kind of compete with everyone else out there. And then I sold um, another Santa Claus. I, I sold the big group last time, but this is an individual one. Uh, $15 for the Italian Santa Claus. And then I sold a jewelry loop for $32. I picked up two of these for $6, I believe. And I already sold one for $40, and this one sold for $32. So that's pretty good right there. So that brings us grand totals. My book sales of $30,787.33, which is an average of $26.24. So I beat the completely arbitrary and made-up number of $25 as my goal every time. And I beat it this time, so I'm very happy about that. 
the Nauta books, three Nauta books for $54.25, which is an $18.25 average, which was on the nose once again to the penny. Exactly what I'm after every single week is $18.25. And it happened once again. So, um, how did all this happen? This was been this was a great bunch of sales right here. I'll tell you what I did. I have never done promoted listings before. Very rarely, I should say. I feel like this, for example, guide to the evaluation of permanent impairment. There weren't that many listed. If somebody goes in eBay and searches for guides to the evaluation of permanent impairment, only like three or four are going to pop up. It's not going to be 50, right? So if you're selling shoes, if you're selling clothes, there's going to be 50 of them that pop up, maybe a hundred. And if you promote your listing, it is going to get on that first page and towards the top. And that could benefit. But I've always figured, how's it going to help if there aren't that many listed? But I thought, I literally had the worst week of the year as far as sales go. And that Tuesday when I got the, the, the deposit from eBay, and it was like $110 or something like that. And I was like, and I look back through the year at every Tuesday payment, by far the worst sale week of the year. And so I thought, I got to do something, right? So I went in and did promoted listings. So I went into the, on the, on the computer and that kid did it on the phone, on the computer and, you know, hot, selected 200, did the bulk edit, promoted listings. I did everything at 2.1%. And next group, next group, next group, did everything on my store, which is about 1200 items. I did all of them at 2.1%. I also listed about a hundred items on one Saturday. Um, just list it all day long, put in a bunch of stuff. I'm not able to list every single day. I try to list at least one thing, but often I can't. I just, I just get home so late once my daughter's marching band season is over. I'll have more time. But until then, um, I try to list daily, but it just doesn't happen. So a lot of listings turned on the, um, promoted listings at 2.1% and man, stuff started coming through. I had, um, seven sales on a Friday, eight on a Saturday, like seven more on a Sunday, which for me is huge. So the week after I had that $110 check, I had a check from eBay for about 785. I don't remember exactly what, seven, 770, 780, something like that, um, for a week of sales, which was the best check that I'd gotten deposit from eBay ever. Um, so, and it's, kept up um it's definitely slowed down a little bit since then but i'm still trying to keep listing stuff and um but that was my you know my, my anecdotal you know story there that uh it worked for me so i know a lot of people say do promoted listings work do they not it seemed to really boost my sales by turning on promoted listings and 2.1 percent and it wasn't just i know i listed a list of like 100 items it wasn't just those 100 so i know it wasn't just because I listed a bunch of stuff that it started selling. But a lot of these stuff that I've mentioned have been sitting on the shelf for, you know, that, that Clydesdale book, it's probably been two years. I've had that book, several other ones for several months. So, um, I'm going to continue to put in 2.1% for every time I list things and, uh, we'll see if it keeps going. It's definitely slowed down a little bit since then, but things are still selling. Um, and yeah, so, Hope it works for you. If you want to try the same thing, maybe you're already doing it. Let me know what your experience is with um, with uh, promoted listings. Further ploy to get people to comment. And I, uh, I've already got a bunch of stuff ready to for another video. So I, um, yeah, so I will catch you. You know, I'll see you that one when it comes out. Hope to see you sooner rather than later. Adios.